Hey, this is Big Guy DIY. Robert. There's a mower my neighbor's using in the background, so sorry for the noise. I got a little project I've been thinking about creating for about a month and a half. Let me show you what I'm going to work on here. This is working uh, on my utility trailer, which you can see in the background here. When I worked on this trailer, I had done some modifications to this tailgate. Now let me show you the modifications that I did. I added L angles in here to help support when my snowmobiles go onto the trailer or any uh, heavy equipment that I bring on the trailer. Uh, the original beams here weren't enough. This screen kept bending. So by putting in these L angles, I welded them in and on the back side are the ski guides for the snowmobiles. What happened is the weight of this tailgate had be has become very, very heavy. Obvious reasons. The tailgate is supported by springs or assisted by springs. And when I first got this, I was able just to put my foot here and just lift this up off the ground without a problem. Now with the all the uh, L angle added on there, it is a lot heavier. And I took a scale to this. I'll show you what the scale looks like. There's the scale. Look at that magic. This is, as you can see, a crane scale. The way this works is I just hooked it into my trailer here and lifted this up to get a weight for what it is at this point on my trailer. So I'm at 70 pounds of dead weight with the hinge and that adds up after a while when you're constantly uh, letting this trailer up and down this tailgate that weight gets to you sometimes these this crane weight or crane scale I got off of Amazon it's a all aluminum body with a digital readout I don't know if you could see that on the camera or not but it's very simple and it works great. So what I was thinking of doing, I looked into buying those spring assists that go right here on top of this to help lift this tailgate up. So basically it's just a large spring with a cable attached to it and then it attaches to your trailer. The thing is those things are around 250 230 250 to 230 and I thought I could do a little better I also found sometimes the designs that I saw were a little obtrusive they, they were kind of ugly looking I have a round top tube I do not have a flat uh, with the, some trailers will use flat angle on this instead those trailer tailgate assists are great if you have a flat top tube so I thought I would like to create something and my original idea was going to be on the top here um, using a black pipe another black pipe and I would put the spring inside the black pipe with the cable and it would come out here and it eventually attach to the trailer but that just adds more more of something where it could get hit or damaged or broken while being inside. Then I thought this pipe here is a two inch pipe. I could easily fit a spring inside of this with the cable and the cable will be exiting out of the back here. So that's the idea. Let me show you the tools or the parts that I purchased to start this project. These are the parts I'm using to start this project. I went out and bought two garage springs. This one here, and the garage springs come in different weight, and they come in different lengths. Let me 
show you here. This one here is 25 inch at 110 pounds. And it has a maximum uh, length of 67 inches. So I'm not looking to use the entire length. Meaning uh, there should be enough torque with two springs. Or enough tension I should say with two springs. When that gate goes down to assist pulling it up. I'm not looking for it to pull it up for me. But to assist pulling it up for me. The other thing I purchased was this. Why? These wheels here fit with inside the pipe. I actually have a pipe here that's the same size. What's there? I'm not using both wheels. I'm just taking the axle out. I just want the wheels. And as you can see, how the wheels fit in. Those will be held in with a grade 8 bolt, which will just be um, through bolted right through the pipe. I will be adding spacers on each side of this. Uh, so, two wheels, two axles. These other two bolts will be used to hold the spring. So, this will go through the pipe that's on the trailer. And it'll go through the spring like so. When you buy these garage springs, they already come with the cable. So you don't have to buy the cable itself. Now with the garage springs, they come with only one cable uh, tightener on here. I bought an extra one just so it holds it. The other end comes as a closed loop. This end here is the part that will be attached to the tailgate while this part here will be attached to the spring. How to attach it to the spring, I purchased, found it, sorry about that, I purchased these. These are stainless steel, and you just screw shut. So the objective here is, this will go through the spring, your cable end will come through here, and that's your connection right there inside the pipe. So that is the idea at the moment. The garage springs cost $28, and then with the additional parts, I spent $69. So I will be able to build this tailgate assist for 69 bucks versus 230 to $250. <clears throat> and I bought all this at my local hardware store. For those who don't know what a garage spring is, let me show you. And here's a garage spring right here. So when a garage door is down, the electric motor that lifts the garage door up doesn't always have enough strength, depending on the brand and the horsepower, to lift up these garage doors. These garage doors are wood. They're not fiberglass, and they're not aluminum. They're wood, and they're very, very heavy. So with these springs completely stretched out, it assists the electric motor to bring that garage door back up. These springs come in different weights from, I've seen it as low as 50 pounds to as high as 200 pounds at my local hardware store. So it's like, uh, I don't know, eight, I think it's eight different pounds of springs. I figure 100 pound is best because two springs together, 100 pounds each just give me 200 pounds of pulling power. Tailgate, like I said, is only 68 pounds. So, I'm not going to use the entire uh, tensile strength of the spring, which is fine with me. But I'm going to keep that spring far enough away where as the cable stretches, I can take that spring out, adjust the cable length, and then reinstall it. So to test my theory, I had to make something to go on top of the current bars or the current round tubing on this trailer. 
I wanted to install something up here just to test my theory to see how it worked out. So let me show you what I did here. So what I made, we're just grabbing scrap wood. As you can see, I just got pieces here holding together. Bolt, my spring, my cable, and then I attached my cable to my door. The height of my attachment on the door is equal to this. So my cable came out here. And then I just wrapped it around the door. I did the spring on both sides because I want both sides to have an equal pressure of pull. I didn't do just one side. I did this last night to figure out what I needed for length for the cable and how far do I want this spring to be? Do I want it to be here on the pipe? I want it to be further up, further down. Well, from this point here, I am five feet from here to the end. My first test, my spring is coming out to uh, almost 48 inches in length. So it's coming down pretty far. So what I did is I changed positions. I moved my spring to this position and then I did the test. So at 48 inches, I was coming to approximately here from that spot there. So from there, I readjusted my cable length. So right now, my cable length is where I need it to be to make this work. When I'm ready to install this into the pipe, I'm going to reverse it. This end here is going to be attached to the spring. Like I said, the loop end is going to be attached to the tailgate. So next, we're going to drill the holes into our uh, top tube here. So one tube will hold the spring, and the other end of the tube is going to hold the uh, wheel, the pulley wheel. So that's next. Before I put these away, I just want to show you the detail of this. What I did is I measured the diameter of the pipe, meaning outside diameter, cut three blocks of 2x4s, one there, here, and here, and just screwed them in. The cutout is the, the top tube is being held by L brackets, or L angle. And so the welding in that L angle sticks further out than the top tube. So I had to cut this out so the L angle fits inside there. To hold the end down where the spring is pulling up, I just used the hose clamp. That's all. Just a long hose clamp and it clamped it right down to the top of the, the tube. The end part, I did not have to do anything to hold it in place because the force as the cable comes down is going down. It's not lifting up. So this whole thing is relatively tight on the top tube so there's no slippage. One, because of these cutouts, the L angle holds it in place from slipping back and forth and this prevents it from lifting. So that's that idea on how I made this. This is just a piece of cardboard I stapled in here because as the spring goes over this, I didn't want the cable to fall inside there or, or the uh, spring get hung up on the two by four bracing that's inside there. When I'm done with this, I'm just gonna take the, all the screws back and put them back into their box and recycle the wood.
Maybe this will work. So next I'm going to drill the holes for the axles that will hold the spring and the wheel. Okay. When you drill holes, especially metal, what I tend to do is see what size my axle is. So this is a 7 16th. I don't want a lot of gap. So this is called the drill chart. So I know exactly what size hole I'm doing. When drilling metal, you want to start off with the smallest or second smallest drill bit to at least create a pilot hole and then work your way up to what you need. So, first through bolt is in. I'm going to actually drill this hole to be a little larger. Um, so I, ha I, I can see into the hole a little better when I bring this spring in because I'm going to have to turn the spring and see where the loop is on the spring in relation to this bolt. As for this. I want to go this way. So let's, let's try putting the wheel in here just for, as a test. have to cut this down here in the bottom because as the cable goes down it's going to cut into this but you can see why I'm putting spacers in here keep this wheel from sliding back and forth so let me do the other side 
here and then we'll come back to uh, the installation of the spring itself. After taking a picture of that stock that I drilled the holes in, I cut these pieces using a uh, powered bandsaw. And I'll show you exactly what these pieces are for, but I'll explain what they're for and, and where they're going to be installed. Actually, let me grab a tube and I can show you. This pipe here is actually the exact same diameter uh, exterior as the pipe on the trailer that the spring's going to be installed. The thickness or the wall of the pipe are pretty close to. On the trailer it's just a hair thicker than this but pretty much the same thing. So it's not a very thick sidewall on the pipe itself that's on the trailer. If you take a bolt and through bolt this you'll crush the tube. So one way to avoid crushing the tube is you need to disperse the force from the bolt going against the tube you need to disperse that so you don't crush the tube as easily and this is what the stock is for it's going to spread the force out on the pipe so as the bolt goes through this you can see what I got here it's going to spread the force out so it's not going to crush the pipe just in one spot it's going to have a much uh, larger spread it'll have a stronger hold I'm also going to put in between this piece of stock and the pipe a rubber washer that way the hole that I have in the pipe that's being through bolted it'll help seal the hole off somewhat from rainwater from getting inside the pipe and rusting the interior of the pipe out so that's the objective of this doing two things one being able to put a rubber washer on and two to disperse the pressure of the bolt so right now I'm going to paint these <coughs> with this product bonding primer it's white unfortunately it only comes in white I want it in black but what I found with this product is um, no matter if I'm spraying aluminum or steel, it will adhere to it so well that you can't even scratch it off unless you're using a sharp bladed knife. The paint will actually come off before this primer will. So that's why I tend to use this. <clears throat> I've used it on out drives on boats, propellers, uh, geez, on my vehicles, and this stuff works great. So we're just going to give it a light coat. And then after this dries, we're going to flip it and spray the inside and then when the inside part dries we're going to paint these black all four holes right there are now drilled now one thing you want to try to take care of is when you drill these holes you're going to have metal shavings sticking out <clears throat> so what I use Call this countersink bit. This one's a half inch countersink. And by on a slow setting on your drill, you don't want to do this fast, you grind away the exterior part of the pipe. That way, there are no shavings, metal shavings that are going to get into your fingers or anything else. <clears throat> the other thing, take notice is when this wheel it's going to be in here where the cable is going to go over the wheel this cap is going to be on what I'm going to do is cut this cap have a groove in it in the backside all the way through 
So when this cap is on here, it's gonna <clears throat> it's gonna protect the elements from getting inside here because this trail is used in the winter for snowmobiling, obviously, with those on there. And I'm trying to prevent as much salt and slush from getting inside this pipe. Now, keeping in mind the depth of this cap in relation to my hole. So that's important. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna put in, say, one screw to hold this in <clears throat> or not. I may just use rubber silicone and just rubber silicone it before it stay in place. Right now it stays in place because of these little ribs on here, but obviously when I cut it, that'll change the tension on the interior of the pipe with these ribs. So we'll find out as we get to it. So before we install these springs, after using those wooden, oh, I don't know, jigs, I guess you can call them, to kind of guesstimate where our, how long our cables are going to be. What I did next <coughs> is I can find my ends here. I put these two ends together, the two loops, put this in the vise, and then determine the length that I wanted for both cables. So they're equal lengths. So now I need to get rid of the excess, which is this part here. These cables, I'll zoom in on a little. These are a, a rope cable. That's what they call a rope cable. When they come from the factory, they're already bound together, as you can see here. But when you cut this, these fray immediately. So I want to prevent that from happening. So these are crimps. What I did is I just enlarged the hole so it will fit onto this cable. So what I'm gonna do is cut the cable to where I want it. And then I'm gonna put the crimp on the end so it prevents it from from uh, fraying. There's different types of tools you can use to crimp these. This one here, as you can see, has a cutout there. You can crimp it that way. Or, you just grab a pair of pliers and just mash it. When I say mash it, it means put it in here, but you want to squeeze one end harder than the other end so this won't slide off uh, over time. So the cable's been cut, didn't fray too much. So we're gonna crimp it right there, just like that on the end. This is used for um, coaxial cable, like cable TV and stuff. Now you can see how I mashed it, but I'm going to take a punch and, uh, and a hammer and punch this in because I definitely don't want this coming off. There you go. You can see, come on, focus. You can see how I punched a hole into that. So that's not going to come off. 
So let's do the other cable. One thing you want to do when you're doing the crimp, you need to slide this on first before you cut the cable because there is a good chance that if the cable frays at the end, you're not going to be able to get the crimp on. If you don't have a crimp, use your vise, like that, like I just did. All right, so our cables are set. The last thing I want to do is, you see how the bolts, or yeah, I guess you'd call it the bolts, for the cable tighteners, how far they stick out. I'm just gonna cut these down with a saw so they're not sticking out so far. Before and after, how's that? So look, the uh, loop on one end of this, this is gonna be outside the tube and it's going to attach to these eye bolts which will be bolted into the frame of the uh, tailgate on the trailer but to get this inside here I need to bend this oh so slightly to match this one not sure if you can see it there you go so let me show you how I bent this just enough to get the cable through for this first thing put on the put on the nuts that are gonna hold this because you don't want to damage the threads on these uh, eye bolts next <clears throat> we're going to put this in the vise You only do uh, half of the eye bolt in the vise. Next, grab a pipe, put it on the end. Now the first one I did, I pulled towards me, so this one I'm gonna push away from me so it's opposite. And there we go. So, this here, we'll just squeeze in. And that's what we want. For the spring end, remember when I showed you these earlier? Doesn't matter which end they go on. This end here, where we put the crimp on, is going to go inside the tube. I made these cables a little on the short side, so when I install these, they may be inside the tube, I don't know, three to five inches, approximately. The reason I made them a little short is I want the uh, springs to be under tension. I don't want them loose and bouncing around. Also, the position that I set these, where I drilled the holes that'll take the eye bolts, the holes are not dead center. Let me grab a pipe here. As this eye bolt sits on the trailer uh, tailgate, it's not dead center to where the uh, wheel be. It's actually on the lower side, because I want tension down on top of the wheel and when this comes up it's going to go just below or close to it when the gate is closed so I might have this turned a little like this I don't know until I actually have it installed but that's the objective all right so we tighten the nut part here in the ring and so we're all set 
this whole thing will go inside the frame. With the wheel assembly here, as I showed you earlier, this will be going inside the pipe. These wheels came off originally this. Uh, to keep this wheel centered, I bought a bunch of different spacers. So for example, one spacer on, then the wheel, and then your other spacers. That'll help keep the wheel centered. I went with um, nylon spacers. I know you can buy these spacers in metal, but I chose this is because this won't rust inside. If it gets salt on it from the road uh, in the winter, uh, the roads here in New England, they use a lot of salt on the roads, and they also use a pre-treatment on the roads before a snowstorm, and those pre-treatments are extremely uh, corrosive so if there's any way I can reduce the chance of rust or corrosion taking place nylon will work if you don't have access to these you can just use uh, just a, a PVC pipe you know they come in different sizes just cut the length that you need But I didn't want metal because, again, I didn't want it to corrode on here. Plus, the metal will be against this wheel, this bearing. I didn't want it rubbing against that. Plastic, it's not going to do any damage to it. So these here I just purchased. They're not large enough for this bolt. So I'm going to have to drill these out right now. And like I said, I got a multitude of sizes. Because I don't know exactly where the wheel is going to fall as I put it in to get it centered. So let's uh, let me drill these out and then we'll start putting the uh, springs inside the tube. Alright, well, this is all I did. Took a pipe, stuck it inside my spring. We're gonna feed that in. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and put it in the hole up here so I know this end here it's a screwdriver. Look at that. Pipe's not long enough. Alright. All right, let me show you what I've done. I got an extra length of pipe and just glued it into the back end of what I have. I enlarged this hole to a half inch and this is a little flashlight so I can look inside, but I'm doing it from the opposite side here, going in. So I can see my spring, this doesn't want to focus, but I can see my spring there. So I'm just going to put my bolt through and I'm going to show you what I'm doing for the bolt setup. Alright, remember these earlier I made? They go in here. I need two of them. Rubber washer. 
the way this is working is I want the head of my bolt on the inside of the trailer because as other things slide in I don't want it to hit this end of the bolt and get hung up it won't get hung up on the head of the bolt so bolt brace rubber washer Yeah, I'm going to be short. Short by a half inch. Well, I guess I got to go to the store and get longer bolts. I'll be back. Picked up new bolts. Original bolt I was using is uh, three inches. We're going to three and a half. Rubber washer. Bracket. So, as I tighten this, it squeezes in on the bracket that I made, it pushes against the rubber washer that I put in on both sides, and it seals that hole to try to minimize any water from going inside. Washer, Butterfingers, Rubber Washer, Rubber Washer,
because this is a regular nut on here, we're doing a lock washer so this nut won't come undone. The other nut is a nylock nut. Remember how I twisted these different? One was forward and one was backwards. I want the hook that's open to aim up, not down. So it's aiming up. So nut, lock washer. Go. Lift this up. Now I have to work on this end cap to go in there. So let me do that. So there we go. Took the end cap onto a bandsaw. I think the only thing, my only complaint is this, but at least it's against the crimp part, not the cable. So one side's done, time to do the other side. When I used my crane lift on this last time, and I said in the beginning of the video, it was 68 pounds or 70 pounds. Thirty eight pounds. How light did this go? We are now completely installed.
The only thing I really had to change between these two points was where my locking pin goes in. I had to change the angle on it. On both sides. But other than that, that's it. You wouldn't know there is a lift gate assist built into this frame. All in all, I'm into uh, hardware, into hard, let's see, the springs, cables came with the springs, uh, the springs are garage springs, they cost me $28 each with the cables, uh, you got the eye bolts, the grade 8 uh, through bolts, so there's four of those at three and a half inches with nuts. Um, not counting trial and error of different hardware and parts, so hopefully you don't go through the same thing. Uh, I'm into it just under a hundred bucks, maybe 110 at the most. But the whole goal was to get this thing hidden into the frame and, and not be able to be seen and to protect it from the elements because in the winters, it spends a lot of time on the road heading way up to the Canadian border hauling snowmobiles so I really wanted to protect that spring uh, the whole design is set up where if and I know the cable will stretch that's why I made the cable a little short than I would normally uh, one to keep the tension and two uh, I know that cable is going to stretch over time so as it stretches I can just unbolt everything Pull the whole assembly out, readjust the cable where it's attached to the spring, shorten it, and reinstall everything back in. And it's ready to go continuously. So it is adjustable. So hopefully this gives you guys uh, an idea uh, how to add a trailer lift or a, a gate lift gate assist. That's what I'll call it, a lift gate assist on your utility trailer at a very affordable price. Uh, so this is Big Guy DIY signing off, Robert. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I got all this hardware at my local hardware store here in town. Uh, it's a great hardware store, it's a true value we have in town. Even though I got a Home Depot, a Lowe's, I think that's it, Home Depot and Lowe's, within four miles of my house my the hardware store is local and i'm, I'm more into uh, supporting the local businesses versus always going to the big box stores except for lumber of course but that's it have a good one give me a thumbs up if you like this take care